welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at 2015 Unit 1, Paper 2. Let's get straight into the video. So for this question, question 1, we have to do some calculations regarding total utility and marginal utility. So let's see what we have to do. So table one shows the quantity of chocolate bars that Romaine consumes in a given period of time, the total utility and marginal utility associated with the consumption of chocolate bars. So we have this table, which we have to complete. A part one is asking us to complete the table into a booklet and complete it to show the different um, total utility and marginal utility values derived from the consumption of one to five chocolate bars. So we're going to do that now. So these are the values for the table and I will go through how we would have gotten the values presented here. So for zero units of chocolate bars consumed, they give us that uh, total utility of zero meaning you have no satisfaction at all being derived from consuming zero chocolate bars because it means you're not eating anything or not eating any chocolate bars rather. So it means there's no change in utility. So the marginal utility here will be zero. As we move from consuming zero chocolate bars to one chocolate bar, notice that the marginal utility here was 20. So it went from 0 to 20 in terms of the MU. So obviously, the total utility will have to be 20 because you were not consuming anything before. So in this case, the TU and the MU are the same. When you move from consumption of one chocolate bar to two chocolate bars, they gave us a total utility of 35. So how would we find out what the MU is? We'll have to subtract 35, or rather subtract 20 from 35. So to get this value, it will be 35, subtract 20, and that will give us the 15. As we move from the second chocolate bar to the third chocolate bar, they give us a TU of 47. So to calculate the marginal utility, it would be 47 subtract 35. Remember the marginal is the change in, right? So it'll be the change in total utility as we consume one more unit. Now for the MU, when we consume the fourth unit of chocolate bars, the MU is zero, right? So you have a marginal utility of zero. So it means then the difference in the TU would give us a value of zero. So the only two values that could work there would be 47 and 47, because 47 subtract 47 will give us zero. And uh, on the fifth unit of the chocolate bars, the MU is negative two. So again, you're going to find the difference, but you have to be careful here in terms of which value you put in where. It's going to be 45 subtract 47 and that will give us negative 2. So that's how we're going to get the missing values for this table. Now we're moving on to part 2 which is asking us to define some terms. So we have to define total utility, marginal utility and the law of diminishing marginal utility for two marks each. So total utility is the total satisfaction derived from consuming a given number of goods or services. So you must mention that is the total satisfaction. The marginal utility, that is the extra satisfaction derived from consuming another unit of a good or service. And the law of diminishing marginal utility with successive units of consumption, it will eventually lead to a fall in marginal utility. Part three is asking us to state the point at which 
Romaine begins to lose satisfaction from his consumption of each additional chocolate bar. And Padby is asking us to stay the point at which Romaine maximizes his satisfaction from consuming chocolate bars, and that is one mark. So the point at which Romaine begins to lose satisfaction after the consumption of each additional chocolate bar. Now the answer, you could write it in either one of two ways. You can either say it occurs after consuming the first chocolate bar, or you can say it's at the second chocolate bar. It means the same thing, it's just a technicality in the wording, but it's either you're saying it's after the first chocolate bar, or at the second chocolate bar, and you wouldn't believe that it makes a big difference there. So how would we know that? Let's scroll up to the table to see. So the reason why it's at the the second chocolate bar, right? If you notice here with MU, our MU starts to fall at this point here. So when you move from zero to one. Notice that our MU actually increased. The MU went up. But when we went from the first to the second chocolate bar, our MU fell, right, from 20 to 15. So this is the point at which his satisfaction started falling, with marginal utility started falling at the second at the second chocolate bar. And for part B, Romaine maximizes his satisfaction from consuming chocolate bars at the fourth chocolate bar. Let's scroll up and see why. Now to figure this one out, you would have had to know that utility or total utility is maximized when your marginal utility is zero. And this comes from learning about the shapes of the curves. So when your TU is maximized, MU is zero. So because we are seeing that MU is equal to zero here, it corresponds with a quantity of four. So that's why you know it's at the fourth chocolate bar. It's because when he consumes the fourth chocolate bar, his marginal utility is equal to zero, which means his total utility is being maximized. For part B, we have to assume that the maximum amount that Romain is willing to pay for a chocolate bar is $5 and the current market price is $2.50. At this price, Romain is willing and able to purchase six chocolate bars. So we're asked to define the term consumer surplus for two marks. Consumer surplus is the difference between the price the consumer is willing to pay and the price that the consumer actually pays. It measures the utility which the consumer receives but does not pay for. B part two asked us to draw Romaine's demand curve for four marks. So here we would have to make sure we have our axes labeled and plot the points the data, based on the data that we are given to come up with this demand curve. Part 3 is asking us on the demand curve, which we're drawing in part 2 above, to shade and label the total consumer surplus. So because we have to draw the consumer surplus on the demand curve in part 2, I'm going to show the two together. So notice that I have my axes labeled. So I have the quantity of chocolate bars. I have price on my vertical axis. And for my demand curve, we know that $5 is the most that he's willing to pay. So this comes on top here. That's the maximum point. $2.50 is the market price. And the question said that at that market price, he's willing to demand six units of chocolate bars. So you would connect and get your demand curve. Make sure you label it D. And consumer surplus, the way how we get the consumer surplus, it is the area above the price line but bounded by the demand curve. So above the price line, the price is 250, so it means the area above here. But it cannot extend beyond the demand curve, so it has to be this area here. 
So you have to identify it. So notice I have an arrow labeling total consumer surplus and you must also shade it. So that way you get the two marks for this question. And the last part of this question is asking us with reference to marginal utility theory to justify the shape of Romaine's demand curve for chocolate bars for four marks. So Romaine's demand curve is his marginal utility curve. His demand curve slopes downwards because of the law of diminishing marginal utility. This indicates that he's willing to pay a high price for the first unit of chocolate because the first unit gives more satisfaction than subsequent units. Therefore, with less utility gained from the consumption of additional units, Romaine, who we assume to be a rational consumer, will only purchase those units if price is dropped. Hence, there's an inverse relationship between the price of chocolate and the quantity demanded. So that's the end of question one. I hope it was helpful to you. You can let me know in the comment section below if you need any more help with any other questions. If you have any other comments, let me know. Give me some feedback in terms of these videos, what you're thinking. And remember, if you want to see more videos like these, to like, share, and subscribe.